Hi, sirs and madams of Cobra. I would like to offer you my services. I have been looking at the Cobra Wiki online and I see that you guys have a few special officers that have animals. I, I guess it's their companions or friends, pets, I, I don't know. Anyway, I think I can also fill this niche of your team. See, I'm not very good at guns or martial arts or computers or, or anything, but I'm good with animals. I have one of the most dangerous animals of all times at my disposal. She might not look like much, but we've been training hard. And in a fight, she can... <laughs> Dangerous. Call me. Okay. Dear sirs and madams of Cobra, I have to say I'm a little disappointed. I got your letter in the mail today, and I believe a person in your office named Codename Paperweight is just very short sighted. I mean, cats. Cats are deadly. Cats attack their prey. They're vicious predators. You're really missing an opportunity here. But I think I have a better idea for you. Okay, what's better than one cat? Two cats. We've been working real hard, and believe me, these two cats equal, see, ready to fight. That Joker spearhead, these two cats equal one of Max. I mean, that's a bobcat. It's just a big cat. Anyway, call me back. Okay. I get it. Two rejection letters. God, that guy paperweight. I get it. Not a fan of cats. What if I had like a hundred cats? They might be enough to take down a Mobat, or I could at least throw them at a Skyhawk and bind up the turbines and bring it down. Think of it, the name could be Cat Lord, Cat Master, Catastrophe. Yeah. If I can't convince you, let's take a look at your own roster. Here are eight people with pets on your team. everybody, it's me Rob. Welcome to Days of Dorker Past. In this special Cobra Convergence 4 episode, I'm going to go over the Cobra agents that had animals. Speaking of Cobra Convergence, I hope you saw yesterday's episode by Special Mission Force. You can check it out in the link below. I also want to take a moment to thank Hooded Cobra Commander 788 for inviting me back this year. It's always a joy to be a part of such a special group of people. So, without further ado, let's get to COBRA! The trend of animal sidekicks in the G.I. Joe toy line began in 1984 with Mutt and Junkyard and Spirit and Freedom. We'll get to them another day. We're here for Cobra. It took almost two full years before Cobra got its first animal sidekick or companion, or whatever you want to call it. And the first one out of the gate was Sorpentor. This reanimated corpse made up of history's most tactical minds was the first figure to come with a pet in the Cobra side of things. And he came with a golden Cobra. Now, in the comics, we didn't really see much of the Cobras that adorned his armor or 
were his pets, but the cartoon went whole hog with it. You had everything from his armor being animated at certain moments with the serpents moving to, of course, the infamous snake spear scene that took down Duke in the G.I. Joe movie. Die, arrogant earth scum! No! Now, honestly, as a kid, I never thought much of it. I mean, it was cool to have a snake for your G.I. Joes to play with. But with Sorpentor, his chariot and his armor were his selling points. So what was a great selling point for the G.I. Joe figures that came before him? His snake was kind of just a second thought. But it was truly awesome. The following year, two Cobra agents were given animal sidekicks and companions. The first on the list is Croc Master. Now with Croc Master, one of the biggest selling points was his large crocodile that he came with. Now Croc Master has a great background. He was an ex-alligator wrestler and burglar alarm salesman. He started up a company called Gator Guard Inc. And with that company, he tried to sell crocodiles as the next new wave of home security. I guess people didn't really go for alligators and crocodiles as the next uh, home security trend, so he joined Cobra. He would stock Cobra Island with various deadly crocodiles and alligators that he would make as deadly as possible. They patrolled the island in all of its waterways and maze-like canals. We saw this a lot in the comic book. Well, not a lot, but in a lot of standout moments. In a sad chain of events, when the October Guard stormed Cobra Island, they killed many of Croc Masters, crocodiles, and alligators. They killed one of his more favorite ones named Lolita right before they knocked him out with a gun butt. In the big war over Cobra, he sided with Serpentor, and in turn sided with G.I. Joe, who also sided with Serpentor. So he was kind of leading the way through the jungles and helping out Joe. That was pretty cool. Crocmaster has always been one of my favorite Cobras. He was a great designed figure and that awesome crocodile he came with. Also released in 1987 with Crocmaster was Raptor. Now, a lot of people give Raptor flack, but he got a lot of play in the G.I. Joe comic. But let's first talk about his toy. Raptor came with an awesome cloth cape and a little bird of prey. He had an awesome hawk cow and bird of prey embellishments on his uniform. His background is that he was once an accountant, but he kind of let the finance world drift away so he could focus on Raptoring. Is that how you pronounce it? Anyway, to take care of birds, birds of prey. He was caught poaching minks on Cobra-owned land by Destro and kind of invited into the fold. In his first appearance, Raptor was working with Crimson Guardsman Fred Seven. They were in a secret Cobra base that was disguised as a garage. While there, Raptor worked on his financing for Cobra and because of this, he was able to track down G.I. Joe by using their credit cards. Which is kind of weird. Why would they use credit cards? Anyway, since he was always mocked by Cobra Commander by how he looked, which he backed up by saying it makes the birds feel more comfortable, Raptor was hell-bent on finding G.I. Joe just to prove his worth to Cobra Commander. And guess what? It worked. There's actually a very famous G.I. Joe comics commercial based on this issue. It's the Joes! Where's the new Cobra Commander? Yeah! With the new Cobra Pogo! Now it's in front of you! Now it's behind! Raptor, let's take off and attack! Cobra! Cobra's got trouble! He's not in bad! Cobra's got a Pogo! And he's up his man! Right back! You and Tunnel Rock set up a slam defense! Cobra Run for the G.I. Joe's Cobra! Anyway, also in the comics, when Billy, Cobra Commander's son, regained his memories, Raptor sent his birds to attack him. Billy, being a trained ninja, was able to kick Raptor's bird whistle out of his hand. 
At this time, Cobra Commander was kind of looking back at his life and regretting a lot of the decisions he made and was planning on leaving Cobra. This made Raptor nervous because if Cobra Commander was out of the picture, what's to say the feds wouldn't catch up the Raptor with all the books that he was cooking and all the tax evasion that he was committing? So, when it came time for Billy to assassinate his father, Raptor stood by and just watched. He was actually there when Billy buried Cobra Commander's body. He was also there when Cobra decided they were going to kidnap the president and he had his birds drop smoke grenades on everybody. Raptor was also the one that dropped the dime on Billy about the assassination. And he told the truth to Zartan, who was disguised as the blind master at the time. Again, he got nervous and ran off and ran into Dr. Mindbender. And after they criticized each other's costumes, they both came up with the idea of cloning Cobra Commander. Because at the time, Fred was assuming the role. Since he knew where the body was located, him and Dr. Mindbender concocted their plan. But of course, when they unearthed the coffin, it was empty. And when the time came for Cobra Commander to resume his role, Raptor was one of the ones that fell to out-of-date sea rations. Number four on the list is the Hydro Viper. Now, the Hydro Viper is one of the most awesomely designed Cobra figures that there are. Everything from his awesome helmet to his webbed hands and feet. But what animal companion did this awesome character come with? A manta ray. Sadly, not much is known about the manta ray companion that the Hydro Vipers came with. But it was an awesome addition. It fit the character perfectly. But there were no comic books about it, and he was never in any of the cartoons. So we really don't know the relationship that the Hydro Vipers had with their Manta Ray companions. But, again, it was awesome to have this animal in your Joe collection. And it was kind of a throwback to the G.I. Joe figures of the 1970s, because the Adventure Team set had a Manta Ray as well. So that's a really neat callback. Also in that year, 1988, was Voltaire, who came with a Vulture. Now, I never really was a fan of Voltaire, but he was part of the Iron Grenadier Force. Voltaire was Destro's general in the Iron Grenadiers, and he had a bird. I guess Destro has a real soft spot for people with birds as pets. Maybe he had a bird as a pet as a child. Hmm. Anyway, Voltaire's Vulture was just something that always appeared in the background in printed works with him. Um, I really don't remember if it ever had a focus in the comics, but yet again, like with some of the other ones on this list, it was just neat to have a new animal toy for your G.I. Joes to play with and interact with. In another strange twist of fate with Raptor, Voltaire was also one of the cobras that was imprisoned by cobra commander upon his return and died of botulism because of tainted sea rations birds of the feather i guess number six on the list is the only dreadnought to appear on this list and that is naugahyde naugahyde came with a boar or razorback i would assume dealing with his kind of outback attire now, Naugahyde was a great figure because of all the great gear he came with, and the boar was the icing on the cake. Naugahyde was recruited by the Dreadnoughts after they met him at a 24-hour donut and grape soda shop. Yeah. Anyway, before this, he was a world-renowned poacher that was chased out of almost every country because of how evil and villainous he was. Naugahyde never really made any comic appearances, but he did have about a dozen appearances on the Deke form of the G.I. Joe cartoon. Now, I'm not very versed in that cartoon, so I can't be too sure that in that his pig made an appearance. It would be awesome. I would think they would want to have a wild boar running around, but that's just me. Number seven on the list comes from 1990, and that's the Undertow Agents. These frogmen that were part of Destro's Iron Grenadiers were genetically enhanced to be able to dive deeper, and they were given 
enough shots that they were immune to any type of pathogen that could be in the diseased and polluted waterways that they patrolled. The undertow toy came with a large silver barracuda. What perfect companion for these deep sea deadly soldiers. Again, with some of the other people on this list, the toy came with the barracuda as just a selling point. It never really appeared in much else. The undertow soldiers made their appearance in the Deke cartoon as well. And again, I don't know if their barracuda made an appearance. Again, like a wild boar, throw some wild barracuda in. It would be cool. The final entry on this list is the Desert Scorpion Soldiers. The Desert Scorpion Soldiers were part of the unruly group that would later become Toxo Vipers. Now, the problem with the Toxo Vipers is that Cobra's suits were made by the lowest bidder. So, not wanting to lose all their best recruits to leaky suits, they decided to make a branch of desert soldiers called the Desert Scorpions. If they go through this desert boot camp with a spotless record, they were able to join the Desert Scorpion ranks. If not, it's back to the Leaky Suit Brigade. Anyway, these were hardened, desert-trained soldiers. And the animal that they came with? A large scorpion. Again, there's no real backstory to it, but this huge scorpion is something out of the original Clash of the Titans movie. It's huge! You would think that they were genetically made. Some mutant made by Dr. Mindbender. If he didn't die from botulism as well. Wow, what a way to go. Anyway, these large scorpions were an awesome toy. But without a backstory, it ends up just being another reason to buy a pretty cool toy. One of the things that made the Desert Scorpion figure stand out is it actually had some cloth on it. So that was a really neat selling point on top of having a giant scorpion. Now, after 1991, I'd have to say that the G.I. Joe and Cobra figures had very generic weapons. They came on plastic posts that you had to pop out yourself. And with that, there were no more animals. There were no more companions for Joe or Cobra. It was pretty sad when you think about it. There were only eight Cobras with animal companions and only eight Joes with animal companions. Eight. In the long, illustrious career of the Hasbro action figures, we only got eight and eight. They could have done so much more with animal soldiers and beast master type characters and just companions and pets and mm, what could have been. Anyway, this has been my entry into Cobra Convergence 4. Again, I want to thank Hooded Cobra Commander 788 and you can catch his episode tomorrow. And you can double up on the excitement because Comic Tropes also has an awesome episode planned on the same day. And as an added bonus, I'm also dropping a new episode on my birthday. So, the gifts keep coming to you. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, give a thumbs up. If you're new around here, hit subscribe and hit that little bell if you want to be notified whenever there's a new episode. And leave comments. I love reading them, and I love getting back to you all. It makes my day. Anyway, until next time, keep being rad and stay dorky.